All right, today we're going to talk about iTerm Relax and how this new feature in Betaflight 3.4 and higher makes a difference. Okay, if you are on Betaflight 3.4 or 3.5, you do want to get the latest configurator, which is 10.4, uh, which will be out here very soon, or you can get it from uh, the Jenkins website if you're into nightly builds. Anyways, you'll see on there now that the iTerm Relax has a toggle. It is on by default, it's set to roll pitch, and gyro is the type. Honestly, you don't have to mess with it. Just make sure it's turned on and you will have uh, a greatly reduced bounce back on your quad. And if you do have bounce back, you just increase the D term and you don't have to worry about the I term causing havoc. So if you're into short videos, that should wrap it up. Make sure it's turned on. Uh, if you're into knowing about the details of what the heck gyro versus set point means and how the cutoff, which you can access through the CLI, how that influences it, stick around and we'll go through that right now. Okay, if you go to the Betaflight 3.4 uh, wiki for tuning, you, know, you can read through this and essentially it basically says just turn it on and there's two types. One, it's de really what it's trying to do is detect high roll rates or pitch rates on the, again, roll or pitch access and then also you can do yaw. And if it detects a high roll rate on pitch, yaw, or roll, pitch, and yaw, whichever you have set there, it will shut off the I term and not allow it to accumulate anymore. The first method to, that's described here is the set point method. The second method that's described here is the gyro. Now the gyro is set to the method by default, and I recommend just leaving it alone for the tests I did and which we'll go through here in a second. Gyro works best. Same thing for the cutoffs. I'm going to show you how to adjust those and how that makes it what it changes, but honestly, just leave it alone. You don't need to mess with it. So let's talk about the problem a little bit. So this is an old log from Betaflight 3.2.1. I used to see this all the time, so let me just highlight this. This is the gyro trace in a roll move. Let me go into here and you can make that darker by just going into here and put three. So that's a little tip for the side there. And you can see essentially this is at, as it's exiting the move, the stick is going back to zero here. And right here is the roll rate and it should go to zero and the dry, gyro should come down and just follow right along this, but you can see we have overshoot, that's the bounce back. And you can see the D term is doing its, its magic and the P term is doing its magic. Why is it having this bounce back? Well, look at this I term. See that I term? It's accumulating as it's coming down from the roll and it's dragging the quad or the, the roll past the zero and then it's doing a soft bounce back. So you'll see that soft and you can kind of, I mean, you can just see the two traces and you can see what's going on. And that I term is, like I said, just dragging around. It's almost like as it's going through the roll, it's getting more inertia. It's getting um, heavier at the ends of the quad. And it, when it tries to stop, it's this artificial inertia that's not really there. So the D term and P term aren't, aren't dealing with it appropriately because it's a, it's not a real inertia. It's, this fake inertia because of this I term. So anyways, that's the problem. So that was recognized. It's like, well, we need to shut the I term off from like here to here so it doesn't accumulate. And same thing over here. From here to here, we need to shut it off because it's it's pushing it farther into the into the move than it needs to be. It's it's essentially we're having a, a bounce up here where it's exceeding the roll rate and then coming back down because of this I term again. You can see the similarity between the two slopes here. So I term was a problem entering and I term is a problem exiting. So how do we fix that? So I'm gonna first look at set point because it's a little simpler of a method. Uh, I don't recommend you use set point, but let's just talk about it. So what we have here is the same charts for the I term. You can see we have a bounce back here and that's one and that the set point, the default for the cutoff value, which we'll show in the CLI is 11 and that uh, 
you know, it's just changing this to set point and using 11, you would get some, you know, at least I would get some bounce back here. So let's pop over to CLI real quick just to show you that. So if you go type in get relax, you can see uh, that same variable for choosing gyro or set point is exposed here, and then also this cutoff value here. So what, what's this mean? You know, why is it 11? It can go from 1 to 100. What, what, what does that mean? So depending on that cutoff, and I'm going to flip through some logs here real quick, you take a look at these debug values. So this is the, the high pass filter that it's talking about. And I know there's a lot of squiggly lines here, so let's just talk about this. This is the high pass filter that it's using to measure um, when the um, roll rate using the set point, which is basically the sticks, away windows, um, is detecting a high input move. And we'll talk about that in detail in a second. You can see really this is just the mirror opposite of that. The debug 2 is the accumulation of the I term. And then this is the final I term. So this and PID I are essentially the same. It's just this is kind of like a magnified trace. So when you're looking at this, you know, where debug 2, this debug mode I'm using is this I term underscore relax debug mode. So if you wanted to record this yourself, that's what you would set. So coming back to here, you can see the accumulator here is, you know, bottoming out at zero or just hitting zero right through here. And you can see it here again. So that's where the I term is, is the I term relax is being triggered. So what we can do is we hold down alt, we can kind of space through that. And you're looking over here to where this number goes to zero and stops. So if I hold down Alt, I can use my right key. I can just go now, oh, it goes to zero right there. So that's not coincidental. In the cutoff value, whenever the debug zero, or that um, high pass filter, is hitting 30, that's where the I term relax kicks in and you know the accumulator stops accumulating a I term value. Again, on the back side of this, you know, when does it kick off, come down, keep going until that goes to, you can see it triggered up to negative one on debug zero here, and boom, right here at 30, then it starts to accumulate I term again, and then this accumulates, passes it over to the I term itself, which is kind of lagged, and then it, you can see that adjusting. So it's pulling it down yet, and then pushing it back up, and then you can see that starts to push back up. Same thing on the exit. So set point is pretty straightforward. Whenever debug zero gets, you know, enters 30 or exits 30, that's where the debug turns or the I term accumulator turns on and turns off. Bingo. Now the set point variation, that's at 11. Now you can see at, if I change that to five, now these lines, this, uh, Debug zero is a much broader peak. So let's just flip back and forth there so you can kind of see that. So you see how that peak becomes a little broader? And you can see how the tail end here, it's really, you know, sloped out uh, pretty long. And in the advice that it has on the wiki, it talks about set point, And if your uh, cutoff is larger, you'll get a softer return to zero on your gyro trace. And you can see that right here because that uh, you can just see how that affects it. It doesn't overshoot at all, but it kind of slowly settles to zero instead of sharply coming down to zero. And that's with a set point uh, used instead of gyro, and that's with the set point down at five. So it's pretty low value. Not necessarily recommending it, but hey, if that's what you want out of your moves, maybe for video purposes, there you go. Now the opposite of that, let's take set point up to 30, and you can see now we get a significant bounce back. So we can see the, the gyro trace there and a bounce back. You can see how these are very sharp, and essentially you have very little I term uh, relax occurring. So the I term's coming back into play. Uh, it's still, you know, when these values are, are passing 30 on the, uh, the high pass filter here, you can see right when I hit go past 30, these drop to zero, so on and so forth. Same thing on both sides. So again, just to flip through these, it's kind of the opposite way you would think. A higher value has a thinner window, 
a lower valve has a much wider window and then the default is 11 and you can go from there so you could see on here if I was to use set point I would probably want something that's a little lower than 11 because 11's giving me some bounce back here so maybe I'd take this down to 10 or 9 to eliminate that bounce back and if I really wanted a nice soft landing I would take that down even further to 5 so that's set point now for gyro it seems a little bit more complicated it's using stick movements to create a window on either side of what I presume is the RC rate and uh, when the gyro is tracking outside of that it shuts off the I term so it's not accumulating if you look on here uh, you can see in this example here and this is set for gyro at 11 so this is the default uh, I term is not accumulating from here to here or here to here entering the move it looks to me that it's pulling uh, essentially when you start to enter into the move uh, with your stick commands or you know maybe there's a, a differential here between the the gyro and the stick that's when it's kicking it in and doing some tests with this it looks like if you go below if you lower the cutoff value in the CLI I get bounce back go to a bunch of spots there you can see that bounce back a little bit here on the first one uh, here's some pretty good bounce back here or if I raise the cutoff to be 30 I was still getting bounce back now softer bounce back there again there that one was good uh, not too bad here uh, here's some bounce back here again now conversely if you just leave it alone at 11 this is roll after roll, no bounce back right, right on to zero set point. No bounce back right 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 to zero set point. So you can see the uh, defaults are good. I wouldn't mess with them. I'd leave it on gyro that had the best results of either set point or gyro and then the cutoff being set at 11 I would leave it at 11 to part quick tip on black box explorer so in black box explorer the latest editions uh, you'll see it has zoom expo and smoothing here and if you use your if you hold down for example the shift key and you use your mouse roller you can actually zoom your traces right on the screen. So zoom kind of, it, zoom is very similar to um, Expo in, in look. So if I would turn off Expo, or the example up here, that's Expo on for these traces up here because it has an Expo at 30. If I would turn that off and then start to increase my zoom, you can see that it starts to get a little bit more definition on the height. Obviously it's important to make sure you're aware of what these values are. Same thing for Expo here. If you hold down Alt and you can then change your Expo amounts. Now obviously if Expo is not turned on it doesn't make a difference. But you can see you can adjust Expo. So you'd want to make sure those are all the same for traces that you're trying to compare. And if you hold down Control Again, for smoothing, you got to make sure smoothing's on. But you can adjust your smoothing, so I can make... Uh, that's a bad example. But let's look at some motor traces. Turn smoothing on for the motor traces, but then let's kind of de-smooth them. So if I set smoothing to zero, it's essentially like turning it off. So you can see you can make a, a trace smoother or less smooth by adjusting that. So zero smoothing is essentially smoothing's off. Either way, if it's 50% smoothed, then while this is on down here, the smoothing on there off, then obviously it's 50% smoothed. And last tip, if you have your favorite trace setups, and uh, I neglected this in a, in a prior video, but you can export your workspace setup, save it as a workspace. So I have this saved out to the, uh, if you go to uh, tiny.cc forward slash filter calc, 
you go into the back blocks explore traces you can save it as uh, this file extension js uh, on and then uh, if you you know upgrade your black box explorer or, or you know want to open mine you would just go to open dialog open log browse to that json and grab that and that will bring in all the trace setups so if i would go to here and i'm, I'm not going to browse if you go here you click on the json hit op up open just like you would for a log or a video and then it will do you know you get your uh, log trace setup so then you can have your hotkeys for for example for mine zero is for noise you know looking at the raws gyros rates uh, roll pitch yaw some stuff for debug modes um, basically getting the big picture rates all the way down to uh, motor so on and so forth so with that i'll let you go uh, thanks and i hope this helped